there were, but they didn't change any of the pay-per-view matches. The pay-per-view was, was, that was decided. Um, and it's all built around, you know, the Roman Reigns, Braun Strowman and, uh, Bray Wyatt in a, was it like a no holds barred three way? All right, here's here's the title. lineup. We got four matches. It's Bray Wyatt, Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns. No holds barred triple threat match for the title. Yeah. So my gut on this is that um, the big match is probably going to be Roman Reigns and Bray Wyatt, which is the match that they originally were going to have at WrestleMania before Vince changed his mind and went with Goldberg. So, but it was that was that had been planned for you know probably from October. So I guess that's the direction they'll probably go, but they didn't want to do it right away. And for with a one week build, it would have been stupid to do it right away. So they got Strowman in there, you know. I would guess to, you know, to lose to, to either one or the other, you know. Um, and then the, the other two would, you know, then Roman Reigns and Bray Wyatt could go in their singles match at some point down the line. Maybe. Um, I mean, we've got a pay per view. Let's see. We got a pay per view. Like I think it's um, after this. Uh, what's the next day? I had all those dates down. I think it was September, end of September, maybe? Um, maybe September 27th, and then come back. Um, maybe it's October 1st. Um, I think it's September 27th, and I think then it's, um, like November, the sat the first Saturday in November, and then they'd come back a couple weeks later for Survivor Series. So it's pretty busy, um, but you know that that's well, I guess that's a normal schedule. This this the second show is just the real weird one. All right, well we got that. We got Keith Lee and Randy Orton. Yeah, Drew I sure... McIntyre has been punted three times. His head may be bleeding internally, so he appears to be off the pay per view. But this so will be probably, the replacement. He'll probably run in, given that like death deathly injuries usually are worth a couple of weeks. Yes. Uh, um. Yeah, that's a weird match to make. I mean, when they made that match tonight, I was just thinking, this is a weird match to make. And then when it was over, it was like, I have no earthly idea. Like, if either if they were going to do Randy Orton and um, and Keith Lee on the pay per view, I have no earthly idea why they did what they did tonight because that four minutes did nothing to make me want to see them wrestle again. They did I a mean, quick four-minute match. Randy Orton has him laid out. He's going for the RKO, and Drew pulls him out of the ring and beats him up for the DQ. Like, that was their build to making you want to see a rematch. Really what the rematch is about, the rematch is actually about Keith Lee getting revenge for Drew on Randy Orton. That's what he said in his promo. Yep, yep, yep. Even though Drew cost him the match... But he likes Drew, so um, I have no idea, you know. We have what. Apollo Crews versus Bobby Lashley for the U.S. title in a match that literally, least, literally, at least, they... At least they, that, makes, that makes sense. Well, I mean, they're in the middle of the show, and they say there's going to be an arm wrestling match, and Mark Henry just flat out says it's between the man, the champion, and the man who's going to be facing him. I was like, did they announce that at any point during the show, or was that, like, the announcement? Well, um, well, it was actually announced in the afternoon before the show, or maybe even in the morning. I mean, that that doesn't like, count on national television. For for those of us watching on national television that didn't spend the afternoon on Twitter, like, did they mention that one time on the show before Mark Henry said that? I don't know. I already knew it, so I didn't really think about it. I don't think that they did because I didn't know that, and it was news to me when Mark Henry announced it. Yeah, um, I think that they actually did it at the beginning of the show. Um, but I'm not positive of that. I, but I know I knew, and um, you know, and then when they announced the arm, you know, the arm wrestling was was part of it. Which and the arm wrestling thing made no sense any co either because how did that build anything? I have no I mean, idea. I mean, because the usual arm wrestling thing, and I mean the you know, this is almost like a reverse arm wrestling thing. Cause the usual arm wrestling thing, it's been done for it hasn't been done in in a long time, but in the um, 70s. It was a really popular gimmick because of Superstar Billy Graham. Because um, around in the early 70s, they did an angle in um, the AWA with Superstar Billy Graham and Wahoo McDaniel. And um, it, was, it was funny because it was actually Billy Graham's... Billy, Vern Gagne went to Billy Graham and was just like... Um, you know, he, Billy Graham was really hot at the time. And he goes, you got like... You, you make the choice. You know, you want to do the arm wrestling thing with... Um, uh, I think it was Wahoo McDaniel. I know it was Billy Robinson, and there, I think maybe been a third guy. I don't think it was Patera. It was Patera. They did the weightlifting thing instead, and so Graham chose Wahoo because he didn't want to wrestle Billy Robinson. I mean, Graham was 
I don't want to say deathly afraid of Billy Robinson, but he had, did not want to wrestle Billy Robinson at all. They had very, very, they did wrestle a couple times, but they had very few matches. So anyway, um, yeah, it's a simple thing, you know, like uh, Graham's going to win. He's, he's with big arms, and then Wahoo gets the advantage, and Graham turns the table on him and table over on him and beats him up and bloodies him up. And it was a super successful angle. I mean, they they did they set record business in some cities. Winnipeg was one of the the you know at the time it was the all time uh, gate record in Winnipeg, and they liked it so much that like a year or two later they did the exact same angle with the Crusher, and that did big business too. And then um, I remember Hulk Hogan did it with uh, Jesse Ventura, and they did big business with that years later. So it's but you always do the same thing. It's essentially the heel cheats and destroys the baby face this one it was like the baby face cheated one and when the heel came to destroy him he got out of the ring and it's like what did this accomplish i was it's baffled like, i was baffled too uh, it's like it's like i mean i mean there's always new ways to do things you know new and better but this was you know it was just not anything it was just there you know it's, it was it's like, not always it's not always new and better dave Sometimes well, people no, no, come no, no, up with no, no, new no, no, ideas, no, no. So, and it's not better. No, sometimes this was one of them. Sometimes it's new and worse. This was new and worse, but much worse. I mean, because when it's over, you clamoring for that thing. And so, so Bobby Lashley loses an arm wrestling match, which in, with with his gimmick and everything like that, he should never lose an arm wrestling match. But he did, and then he like well, he lost because the other guy cheated. I felt sympathy for Bobby Lashley. Well. They said that Bobby Lashley cheated first. I didn't really... Because he didn't he cheat at all. Well, they explained that he did cheat. He violated the rules by putting his feet in a certain way that was cheating. And then uh, Apollo Crews stomped on his, on his feet and Come put on. his arm down. But they, they, the announcers absolutely said, they emphasized that Bobby Lashley was the one who cheated. And that Cruz was just doing, um, you know, retribution, giving him a receipt. We have Bailey and Sasha versus Shayna and Nia Jax, who started well, out feuding and then became partners. Well, yeah. that match is a lot worse than the one I was expecting. Tag titles. That's going to be a challenge. I, 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 you know, what do you, whatever. That, by the way, by the way, the writers in that in that um, segment with Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax, it's like, I mean. I guess there's people who know about the Monsters, but Haystacks Calhoun... Oh, dude, the, the Monsters now, and ha Haystacks Calhoun for crying out loud. I mean, my, well, you know what it is? There's words they can't say because they'll get heat for saying those words. So they instead said the Monsters and Haystacks Calhoun instead of the words that they can't say. I thought that's like, you know, it's like it's basically um, we're going to do like a Vince Russo you know, thing, but they won't, you know, people will get mad if we do it. So we're going to say the Munsters and Haystacks Calhoun. So that was quite something. Haystacks Calhoun reference in 2020. Unbelievable.